Up to the office, you'll see warrants on it, and I have the page in there. All right. That's another important part of the fermentation process, shouting and roaring at the distillers. <laughs> Fermentation is important, it's often overlooked in the whisky industry in, in Ireland. Um, it is the most important part of the process. It's where flavour is made and it's where we can liberate the flavours from the wort that we produce from the malt of barley that we have here. So we liberate the flavours by using a thermoregulated fermentation process. We do not want a rapid fermentation, a vigorous, violent fermentation that takes 48 to 72 hours, which is the norm in the industry. We like to ferment for 120 to 140 hours, depending on the single farm margin of barley. The wort is separated from the grain. It's pumped into a holding tank in behind me, and then it goes through a wort cooling process, and then that's where the yeast is pitched. So the yeast is what transfers them sugars that we've produced in the brew house into alcohol and esters. So after terroir extraction, wort that comes off the filter is pumped into this holding vessel here. It's called a pre-run tank. You don't want any grain going into your fermentation, so these filters capture anything that gets through the filter, if there's a rip in the cloth or anything like that. So from here then it goes through wort cooling. So you're bringing wort at a temperature of 68 degrees down to 21 degrees. That's the optimum temperature for yeast to grow. If you go in at a higher temperature or lower temperature, you'll suppress the yeast, you'll kill the yeast and you won't produce alcohol. So that 20, 21 degrees is the critical temperature. With heat transfer, it's also heating up the cold water that's cooling the wort and we put that hot water back into our hot liquor tanks and that's used for brewing. So I'm going to grab a sample of the cooled wort. So this is from Francis's Kyo's batch. The characteristics there are the terroir from the barley extracted from Francis's field. So looking at the microclimate topography, the character of his barley is now in this wort. I would put 100 mils in here. Now this is not accurate, all right? It's just for demonstration. I would get one gram of compressed yeast, say this is one gram. So that will go into a heater at 30 degrees to represent what it would be in the fermentation vessel. The yeast would then start to bud and multiply and produce alcohol. This is called the attenuation test. I would leave that for 24 hours and what the attenuation does, it gives me an idea how much of the sugars that yeast will consume. So that's just a little quick test. I do this for every new batch. These are bags of yeast. Storage of the yeast is critical. We have to store in this fridge at four or five degrees. It lasts about two weeks from the day that it arrives here on site. Did you ever do a bit of homeschooling in a fridge? But then I had a hat on and he made me take it off. And he's there with his nice hat. Huh? And we're in a fridge at four degrees. So as Farm A comes through the process, it has its own unique characteristics and we enhance them through the brewing process, through anaerobic milling, infusion, temperature mashing and through our terroir extraction using our mash filter. So now we have those separate character flavours from each batch. So now it needs to go through the fermentation process. It's a standard distiller's yeast we use. So the flavours aren't necessarily coming directly from the yeast, they're coming from the barley. So from our single farm malt we have Wort, sugars, bits and mins, nitrogen, all going into that yeast. So you do picture that yeast bud in your, in your sugary wort. It generates heat during the fermentation process and your byproduct from your yeast bud is CO2, which we don't want. That's vent vented out of the fermentation vessel. Alcohol and esters. Eight hectolitres of deaerated water in here, and he's mixing 12 bags, 240 kgs of compressed yeast in here. So it'll mix for about 20 minutes, Paddy, is it? 20 minutes. So he has it timed with the wash coming out of the mash filter. So that's your yeast in the compressed form. So when it rehydrates in the water, then we add it to the sugary wort. Your sugars start mixing in with the, with the yeast cells. Is this where you get our best sides now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Are they doing a whiskey award for rear of the year? We might enter. <laughs> We're on top of the world looking down on creation. These are the top of the fermentation tanks. We have three tanks full of wash. 
and the word is sent down to a wash back down the corner. So we'll go down and have a look. Go down and have a look, yeah. So there's glycol supply on the outer skin of the fermentation vessel, which allows us after about 16 to 18 hours of the primary fermentation, your heat is generated, your temperature rises, and we then introduce glycol to cool it around 28 to 30 degrees. So that allows for that cool and long fermentation, secondary fermentation or malolactic fermentation. That's where the intensity of flavors come out in the wash. Because we have the equipment, the glycol, the control valves, the temperature gauge, the stainless steel to allow us to carry out a thermoregulated fermentation. We fill each one with 85,000 litres of wort. So each single farm that comes in here. So the lag phase, that's probably about 14 to 20 hours. So the, the yeast is getting used to the environment of the wash. Now the yeast starts to grow. Them, them yeast buds are multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and producing more alcohol, more CO2, and more ester formation through the fermentation process. So our fermentation is 120 hours, which is long in the industry. And this is important because this gives us our style of whiskey. And we keep that for another 40, 50 hours in secondary fermentation. So again, it brings on that floral, fruity flavors through the new make spirit. And, and the reason that happens is because we do this secondary or lactic fermentation here. Secondary fermentation, like that's vital for us. So this is the stainless steel conical fermentation vessel. And behind me here is our glycol control, which allows us to carry out our thermoregulated fermentation. So traditionally in breweries and distillers, you would have open fermentation vessels. And we have four up in the old part of the brewery, you might go up and have a look after. So during the fer primary fermentation where your heat is generated and your yeast is multiplying, your temperature rises. So we introduced glycol to keep it around 28, 30 degrees. That puts the lid on the heat and allows the, our long and slow fermentation. So it allows us to ferment for 120 to 140 hours because we can cool it down. That allows us to liberate the flavors within the wash. So the intensity and purity of the flavors come out in this process. Here we have our temperature gauge. This allows the distiller to monitor the temperature of the wash in the initial stages of the fermentation. Our process is take our time, there's no panic. We're looking for quality, not quantity. And if we were looking to push stuff through the distillery, we'd be trying to get this at 55 hours or thereabouts. So, but that doesn't matter to us. It's the, it's the reactions that happen in the fermentation that we're looking for. We need to check our gravities every eight hours so just to ensure that the gravity is dropping and that the pH is dropping, okay? What we'll do now is we'll go down, take a sample of Martin Foley's last fermentation and we'll see how it's performing. Looking for a pH of around 3%. Uh, we're looking for a gravity of around 1.0, which will mean that the yeast has consumed all the sugars and we have an alcohol. And we'll also check the ABV. So we filter our wash first, just to ensure we get a reading. So I said we're looking for ester formation here, and the lower pH will determine whether I've achieved it. Anything lower than 3.5 of pH. So this started off around 1065 of gravity. So now you get your wash, and we put it through our Anton Power, and that will give us our gravity. If that wasn't fermented right, we could pinpoint exactly the hour that the problem started, why it started. The whole fermentation can be taken day by day, hour by hour, down, down to the exact minute. We've spent so much time and effort working with the farmers, getting the different tarawas from each of the batches, minding them through the malting and brewing process. The flavour is coming from the barley, but we can, as a distillery, decide the style of spirit that we want. Now, if you wanted to promote flavours, you could use other yeasts. You could use champagne yeast, wine yeast. The single farm origins of the barley is where the characteristics of the flavour come from. That's why we use our standard distiller's yeast. Come on, Anthony, get out of the way there, will you? <laughs> so you have your pH at normally around 4.5. <laughs> come on down there, pet. All right, honey bunny. <laughs> Hey, did you see my artwork in there? No! Well, you have to draw it in there, eh? Leave, leave them in there now. We have an hour now, just, and then we'll give you an exam afterwards. Yeah.